It's like one question I get all the time is, is like, how much money do I need to start with? And that's a stupid question in my opinion. Welcome back to Be The Trader, everyone. Today I have a very special guest and a return guest, I might add, Triforce Trader. He's joining me today. If you're curious who he is, you need to go check out the episode where we talk about his journey. But in short, he's a successful algo trader and it really focuses on that end. So I wanted to bring him back because he has a different perspective than I, and we want to talk about today the topic of why traders fail at trading. So Matt, welcome back to the show, my man. And if you want to take it away, go ahead. Thanks for having me, Alex. So I think the main reason why most traders fail is because they don't really have any kind of trading strategy. Most of the time, they are blindly buying and selling based off of how they feel about something. And that can be good if you hone that skill. Uh, but for most people, they can never hone that skill and they end up just losing all of their money by just trading randomly, basically. What do you mean by it could be good if they hone that skill. You have any example of what you mean by that? Yeah, so there are certain traders that are able to think analytically while also simultaneously keeping their emotions in check and utilizing their gut basically plus their analytical mind to make trading decisions. Um, this though, I think personally is extremely rare. I would say out of all the, like any successful discretionary trader you've ever heard of, they have somewhat mastered this skill. Um, ducks would be an example of this. So ducks, uh, does a lot of like spreadsheet analysis. So he has a strategy as his backbone but he doesn't just buy and sell because of a strategy. He, he listens to his gut of when he should act. And that puts him in a class of trader that most people will never get to. Um, I think it's rare. So yeah. What do you think, what do you think it I mean. is that enables him to, to do that? You know, what do you think it is that, that those, those, select few traders who can have a data set, but then still use their gut to determine, maybe I don't take this trade today because my data says so, but I'm not going to take it because of X, Y, Z. I honestly don't have a good answer to that. Um, I think, you know, it's just something innate. So yeah. I, so for me, when I look at someone like ducks, like he's past Tim Gertani in terms of like how much money he's made and how quickly he's made it. He's passed even myself, he's passed like any trader before him. And I would say, you know, in a lot of ways, Ducks is an anomaly. Um, and he just, he trusts himself, I guess, is really what it comes down to. And when he's wrong, he's wrong and he doesn't care. And then he just moves on and just slams it again, you know? Um, but there, I, there's no, there's no scientific method, I guess, to achieve that level of insight. I mm. guess. I I know it, that sounds terrible for all of you want to be traders <laughs> out there, but <laughs> you know, I, mean, I think I think you know, I think a lot of it comes to do with time. You know, I think Ducks is is a unique individual who stands out for sure. But I also think. You know, there's a lot of traders who might not be at Dex's level, but they're consistent and they're doing well and they're doing okay or whatever it may be. But yeah, he does stand out. I'm curious because you also said like people are failing because they don't have a statistical edge, right? Yeah. Do you believe like most traders should have a statistical edge and track it and have it formulated to where it's to a T, I know exactly what my win percentage is, or do you feel like there could be some who who kind of just like, for me, I know we're different and this is all totally fine, but like I take pictures of everything and I take notes and annotate and all that. So like, do you feel like um, 
those are one and the same, or I just one's more advanced. What's your thoughts on that? Yeah. So I would say that if you're going to trade, like you need to have an edge. That means like if today's close is greater than the close by, let's say, 100 percent then sell short the next bars open that is something you can tell a computer to do and you can back test that you know through time basically and then you know like how often you'll be right and how often you'll be wrong um, and then therefore that should give you some level of confidence to pull the trigger which is really what you're trying to achieve unless you want to just do it like I do, which you just let a computer do all the work. Um, so I, I don't think anyone should really ever trade without knowing what their, what the probability of them being correct is. Like one question I get all the time is, is like, how much money do I need to start with? And that's a stupid question in my opinion, because if you have an actual strategy, you'll know how much money you need to actually trade that strategy. Don't mm. you are looking at the carrot before the stick and really you need that backbone to just know that you should be trading. Um, and then there are people that exist. And these are, like I said, outliers who just seem to, it just clicks. Like they'll look at something and they'll just trade it and they'll be, you know, right more often than they're wrong and and that can exist too but i think for the vast majority of, of us myself included i think you really need to know what your edge is um, and if someone comes to you and says well how do you make money and you can't explain it in simple terms like you have a real problem well let's say that, let's say someone has an edge right they're like matt i do have an edge here's it is right i have stats to back it up but i'm still just eating dirt, you know, like, like, like what, what, why do you think those people are failing? Like the ones who might have an edge, but they're still just not just breaking wind. They're just dying. You know what I'm saying? They're bleeding out. Hmm. Well, that could be for a lot of reasons. So the first reason could be execution. Uh, if you are an intraday trader and you create a strategy intraday, getting fills is part of your edge because if you don't get the fill near or close to the exact price of like where you need to be you end up with a lot of slippage mm. which in turn leads to you bleeding out slowly because on the things that work for you you make a big gain but then you die by a thousand cuts basically because you're just not there's not enough profit to make up for the slippage basically um the other thing is, is you actually don't have an edge like that's number that's like the second most common reason you think you do but you don't and then explain that why do you think why do you think that happens like what do you mean because to those people? because like just how you explained how you take a a screenshot like i wouldn't consider that necessarily having an edge i want to see the data of what if Alex pulls the trigger at this exact point a thousand times or across a hundred different symbols. What is the probability of him being correct? And what his what is your payoff ratio? Is it one to one? Is it 0.98 to one? Is it two to one? Is it three to one? Is it 1.5? Because that's also a very important number. It's not just about your accuracy, it's also about the payoff ratio of like what's your what is your payout? Um, and so you could look at a pattern, but patterns morph and yes. that, that morphing is a problem because it's not really real. And what I mean by that is, is if you take a line and draw it diagonally on a 30 minute chart, and then you change the perspective to a daily chart that line doesn't mean shit anymore. The only lines that actually kind of work are maybe like, you know, lines that say this is support, this is resistance, because if you change the scale, true, it's still the same thing. So when you have a strategy that's based off of a pattern like that, that morphs like that, 
it's okay, but the morphology is the, the issue. Um, and actually those patterns, right? You can teach a computer those patterns. Those patterns only work about like 52% of the time, but most of the time they fail and then they break down. So they're actually better like counter trend trades than they are actually what they're supposed to be doing. Interesting. And, and so, and I, I interrupted you because you said, you said um, the second one was they think they have an edge, but they don't. And then what was the third one you were thinking of? Yeah. So the, the third thing is, um, I would say something's not necessarily being executed correctly somewhere you know if they're if they build a strategy for example i mean that's easier to diagnose than someone who says hey sometimes i do this and sometimes i do that that's not a strategy in my opinion like <laughs> yeah, that's, that's really hard for me to like nail down what you what you want to do so um and i think I don't know. There's a humanness, I guess, to like wanting to be correct and wanting to be right. And also like you have to battle with that when you're a discretionary trader, when you're a discretionary trader, you have to deal with tons of things that if you're a, you know, systematic trader, you don't necessarily have to de deal with because you can just like diagnose a problem and say, Hey, this is what's wrong. And you're a discretionary trader. You're like, Hey, I was doing this thing. And it just doesn't work anymore. And I don't know what to do. So it's funny because that happens a lot to a lot of traders. Like I'm sure you get that message too, where people be like, I had a killer two months and now I can't make anything happen. Mm -hmm. And and would you say that relates to the ones who are trading like a simple pattern that kind of morphs and changes? Yeah. So here's something interesting. Um strategies die and then they come back. So uh, just to give you an example from what I trade. So like light three crude oil, like if you had bought every single Monday from 1987 to 2008, like that was a good, just like get by on Monday, get out. Like that was a, like, that had a statistically wonderful edge. And then all of a sudden it changed. And then from 2008 until now, Monday is like one of the best days to short oil. So, you know, 10, 20, 30 years from now, if oil still exists as a futures contract, you know, there's a possibility that Monday becomes a good buying opportunity again. Mm -hmm. And so if you have a pattern that has worked for you and it stops working for you, you can't just throw it away either. Like you should track how it's doing and if it starts to come back then maybe that's something you put back in hmm. but if it just continues to die into infinity then you can either look to do the opposite or you kind of just you know just let it be you know so. it's interesting because i went through this for a long time a long freaking time where i would like find success and then fail find success and then fail. And that's because I wasn't adapting and I just kept trying over and over, even though it stopped working. I, you know, what I'm curious on, let's say you have a trader who's in that boom and bust cycle, right? I'm sure you talk to people like that. What's your suggestion to those traders? Cause you know, they're failing, but they're like, man, I, Matt, I'm getting it. You know, I got, I got some tracking data right here for you. You know, obviously I'm moving everyone if you're curious, but like I have some tracking data where I'm going to, I show you for three months, I killed it. And, you know, now I'm, I'm just blowing up a little bit every once in a while. Like, and maybe they're blown up because they get emotional because it's a discretionary trader, right? Maybe they're like, man, if I would have traded this the way I normally trade, I would have been fine. What's your advice for those who would just emotionally get involved? Yeah, I don't know. That's hard for me to say just because like, I don't trade like that. Um, you know, I, if you have an edge, like you should just be pulling the trigger all the time, like without hesitation. And then what you do is whatever your equity curve is, for let's say, let's say the person comes to me and say, this is my equity curve for three months and it's great. And then I would say, okay, well now I want you to draw like a 30 day 
moving average or a 30 bar moving average of your equity curve. And if you're doing the exact same thing as you were before and the PL starts to dip below this, this average, just stop trading that mm. and do something else. And then if you see something that you would have like bought and you're tracking it this way and then you say, oh, well, I would have done this. And then you start to see, okay, well, hypothetically, the equity curve starts to like rise above this. Now I'm going to start trading that again. So that way you don't deal with like the strategy is just dead in the water for years and years and years and you're still trading it and you're taking all of those losses. Um, but, you know, and that's actually the best time to trade a strategy is when it's like in the, in a drawdown. Um, in 2015, just an example, in 2015, was it 2015? I'm trying to remember, maybe, there, I don't know, there was a year where like the hive mind, which is like a strategy I have, like went down and then went sideways. And it did that for a whole year and people could trade the strategy. And of course, what happened? Well, people stopped trading it because, mm -hmm. you know, for two years it had great performance and then it had a drawdown for a whole year. And so, and then the next year it went on to make 110% on a hundred thousand dollar account. So the people who stopped trading that they felt really dumb. And what did they do? Well, now they start trading it again, right? Now it's at like, it's at new equity highs and they start trading again. Well then, so I guess this was 2018 when this happened. And then in 2020, it goes through another drawdown. So they start trading it at the very top. And then it comes all the way down. It gives back half of the gains from the previous year, which isn't too terrible. I mean, it sucks, but they're still net positive had they been, you know, trading it the way it should have been done. So this is the same way that you kind of have to like approach your own strategies if you're a discretionary trader. I mean, you should be tracking what the you're doing, okay? Period. And then you kind of just put like a 30 period moving average. If it starts to drop below and it's a specific strategy, you stop trading it. When it comes back around, then you start to trade it again, you know, but you got to have some kind of faith of all the work that you did actually is real. Like yeah. at, at the end of the day, that's really what it comes down to. So. And I think, I think, um, and by the way, everyone, this is not like a standard interview. This is more like a fireside chat, even though I'm just questioning Matt, like a, like a ton, <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, it's crazy, man, is the idea of we can have a setup, right. And we can, we can notice things changing like, oh, this is not working, but yet we still push and we keep on pushing or the way that we'll end up get like one, my biggest challenge, right? If I'm just being open and honest, my vulnerability is, is I'm so hard on myself. And, and I think, do you feel like traders, I, I think a lot of traders deal with this too, where like they're so hard on themselves where like they're doing well and then they have just one rough day and they beat themselves up. I do that sometimes for sure. And, and the rough day could be like down just like a normal one hour day. Like, you know, if I risk <laughs> one hour, you know, but like, I, I feel like I miss great opportunity. Right. And then, and that right there, I feel like holds a lot of us back. Cause it does hold me back sometimes where it used to make me spiral. Like it used to make me, I I'd have one bad day. And then what happens the next three days, five days, six days are all bad, you know? And I got, I was able to kind of get away from that. And now where if I have one bad day, I just like, I go, I got a massage, you know, I go, I go do something. <laughs> I go do something to relax. But I think a lot of people do get in their head, just like I do sometimes where you're just like, crap, like your confidence kind of gets shot. Anything, anything you have to say about that? Like in terms of confidence and how you can get it back or any suggestions for those traders who kind of know what they're doing, but kind of beat themselves up to death. Yeah. So like what you said was actually a good coping mechanism, which is to do something positive to kind of like negate how you feel and it may not work. But the second thing is, is that you kind of have to be realistic with yourself. It may not make you feel any better, but 
just like you're going to take thousands of trades in your lifetime if you continue to trade. And, you know, one bad day is, is nothing. Um, Cause if you, if you're constantly focusing on like the past, the past, the past, the past, you're pulling that technically into the present. So, which makes, there is no past mm. at that point. And mm. that is affecting you now. And it's just a repetitive cycle that people go through. And the thing is, is like, that's why having a strategy is very important because if you're going through the negative spot or the rough spot, you know, like, Hey, I've done all this work. I know what I'm doing. I have performance that says, Hey, yeah, this looks great. And I'm just going through a, a drawdown. Um, you know, and then you just keep doing it, you know, as long as it's not insanity, basically, where, you know, you're keeping track of like, okay, is this working or not? And you just keep doing that. And you just go through the motions. And that's, but that's part of trading, like you can't have winning, unless there's losing. Hmm. And you can't have losing unless there's winning. And if so, if you're if you get upset, oh, by you having, can have losing, even though winning. Yeah. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, is like, if you're doing all the oh. things you should be doing, right? you know, you, you're going to go through winning periods and you're going to go through losing periods and you're going to go through a mixture in between. And I just think that a lot of people just get stuck. Like I am a failure and it's mm -hmm. like, no, you've done so well up to this point. Like think about where you were and where you are. And yep. so, mm -hmm. yeah, I just think it's important to, not be so hard on yourself it's and you have to detach yourself from money really oh my god that's like the hardest <laughs> thing to do you know, what I'm saying? You know it's, it's funny i preach constantly in my show's process over profits but i find myself sometimes too like when i'm mm -hmm. doing really well i'll start to peak and i'll be like and what usually happens is maybe i'll celebrate with like a friend on a phone call you know i don't really post on social media about that kind of stuff and then and then what happens sometimes not all the time but uh, maybe I trade a little poorly. So it's it's interesting that trading so weird, at least in my opinion, where like you can't over, you can't really celebrate yep. and you can't beat yourself up. You just got to trade. And, yeah, exactly. and that's all you got to do. It's like, it's a normal thing to make money. It's a normal thing to lose. Like it's normal, but that's mm -hmm. so hard to like, that's been my biggest challenge. Like, for me personally, I think it's a lot of people's too, because we come from the working class, right? We're just like, well, you've been indoctrinated to a, a very particular ideology, which is that if you work hard enough, things will just work out for you. And that is not how life works at all. The whole name of the game of life is to try to put all the odds in your favor, but expect nothing because mm -hmm the expectation is what is killer. You know, people say, Oh, I've been trading for years and I can't find success. It doesn't matter how long, like it, it, it takes as long as it's going to take some of the best traders that are featured in even like market wizards books. One dude, it took him freaking 10 years, Yep. you know, and he just kept bashing his head against the wall and that's fine. But I, I think, if you try to apply what society tells you and put it into the market, you're going to be extremely disappointed. Um, and that's why I love the market because the market is a much more realistic representation of life itself. Like it goes up and it goes down and there's sometimes there's just nothing. It's just like stagnant air. <laughs> And yeah. um, like, and there's, and no one can like master it. Like there's no, there's not like a grand master of trading. You yeah. Know? <laughs> like, and that's really true of life. Like even, so let's say you're a, you're a great trader, you know, a mm -hmm. hundred years from now, there will be someone who's even better than you. Yep. Um, you know, so there, there's no, there's no uh, top of the mountain, if you will. Yep. And I think a lot of people, when they get into trading, they they have a conquering mentality and that's what gets them in trouble. And it's not their fault. I mean, you know, I don't know about you, but when I was growing up, people were like, if you go to college, you'll get a great job. It's like, yep. by the time I got out of college, it's like, 
all right, there was no pensions anymore. Nobody gave a shit about you. Like they were just like, yeah, do your job and get paid like trash. And I was like, <laughs> okay, yeah. cool. you know? Um, yeah. And it's like, I don't know. And so I see that all the time where people apply what works in the real world to the market and that's why they fail. Isn't it crazy? Like it's so hard to get away from that. And I've been trading for, and I love that you said people say, I've been trading for the XYZ time period. I should, you know, I'm why I'm, and it's, you shouldn't, that's been one of my, that's one of my struggles too, right? Like I'm like, you know what? It doesn't matter how long it takes you. You just got to keep going, keep, keep moving forward because everyone's in their own lane. Everyone's in their own journey. It's just everyone starts to compare, right? Like we start to be like, well, Matty Owens is fucking killing it. Like, why am I not killing it? You know, well, because he's a robot, you know, like, <laughs> like yeah, I'm just kidding. But, but the, I, yeah, I don't know. Yeah, you have to kind of stay in your lane, like you said. You do, I, yeah. just, I just think, you know, it's a mentality of trying to, con- it's a game. Like, I want to conquer this hmm. and you can never do it. And that, is what makes it fun that's why people do it until they die like (laughs) um and that's those are the best kinds of games that we play but you know like you're only and the thing that you have to keep in mind too is like even people like myself or people like ducks or gertani i'm not trying to separate myself from people that was probably the wrong phrasing but we all go through periods of loss like and we and we're no better than anyone else like we we just have like a record of like yes it seems that we know what we're doing but we're really no better than the last trade that we made you know and like i i watched gratani literally get on stage and be like i'm gonna drop the hammer and i was like (laughs) bro the universe is gonna smack the shit out of you bro like and it did i was like (laughs) you are literally tempting the market gods like if they exist (laughs) but you know and that that's because he was on such a good run you see like if you get entangled in the good you think that you're some kind of living market god and if you get entangled in the bad You feel absolutely like the shittiest person on the face of the planet. (laughs) And so you you have to learn to separate yourself and say, okay, when I win, like when I win, I don't care. When I lose, I don't care. I just, I'm on to the next trade. And I, that's why I don't like celebrating like, Ooh, look at me. I used to, but I stopped that shit because the the second that w- went across the board and I posted it or like I talked about it is the very next day of just getting slapped the shit out of like so it's just like <laughs> dude I know like, <laughs> it's like come like stop like just just like relax you're gonna win and you're gonna lose and you don't need to rub it in anyone's face yeah you know like how do you refrain from because there's a lot of people out there who 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 can't who who like when they do well you want to celebrate you know what I'm saying like you you like especially when you're a struggling trader like you want to share it with another trader and be like yo man I, I nailed this but like it's counterintuitive because you don't want to do that because if you do that you kind of get lost in that and then you kind of you can but, screw yourself yeah so it's like um an iron fist and a velvet glove basically you want to be happy but also realize just like at the si- at the same moment think to yourself i'm really lucky like i lucked out because on some level even though you do all the work and you you have a strategy and let's say you do what i do you automate it okay there is a level of luck that goes into it yeah. it's like throwing dice you can you could put dice through like a whole contraption, but as soon as it's like out of your hand or out of wherever it's coming from, it is, there's random chance in the air and how it's going to land unless it's like a fixed die. (laughs) Exactly. So you have to look at it like that. So be happy. Like, cause you know, ducks, you know, will text me, dude, I just crushed this. And it's, and it is 
celebratory, but he doesn't go overboard. Do you know what I'm saying? It's like, okay, what's next? You know, just bring it down just a little bit, you know, versus running in the streets being like, I made $5 million, bitches. Like, (laughs) do you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, it's funny you said that because you also said, it's just funny you brought up Gritani because we all love Gritani and and it's it's great that he shares a lot because he he talks about how I mean after he like killed it he went through a year of not killing it you know what I'm saying just a straight year and and to be able to continue to trade like that's that that you you know that messes with the confidence and I like that you said that even you ducks Gritani just naming what he means is anyone any trader goes through these periods. And I think how you handle it is key, right? But what about the trader? I, I've noticed, like I talked to this one trader, um, I won't use his name right now, but he, like almost every day, he's a young trader, real new. He's been trading for like three months. Dude, and he's doing really well. And I'm like, wow. Like, and I talk to him every day. It's kind of like, I wouldn't say official mentor, but we just talk, you know? Mm-hmm. And I am very impressed by him. And what's, what's unique, though, is what really changed him. And I just told him one thing. I just said, look, man, I was like, you you risk way too tight. And you risk way too big of size for that tightness. Like, you need to just loosen up a little bit, maybe downsize. And that really made him, like, I want to say consistent because he's only been trained for three months. But it made him pick up the ball and start having consistent days. You know what I'm saying? And so – do you feel like people have that challenge? Like that's one of the reasons why maybe they're not successful is because like they, they like pick those just random shit to risk off of or stuff like that. Yeah, of course. And I mean, that goes back to the whole thing of like a strategy. So I guess I should clarify what a strategy is. It's what like parameters, what stop and what target those all have to be in a strategy, at least for me. When I say strategy, it's all inclusive. Um, But the other thing is like, yeah, you have people who just like, oh, I only want to lose like $100. And it's like, well, that's, you're going to get stopped out at $100 for sure, but (laughs) you're not going to get the upside of what you want most of the time. Um, Yeah it just comes down to just having a strategy really like it should tell you where to get in where to get out and what conditions equate to that Mm -hmm. um and just tracking that really what i I think is unique about this conversation before we start to wrap this up is is i think the biggest thing that stands out from this well it's a lot of stuff but like the main thing like the main thing to me is is just understanding that you need to have a strategy right but also stay in your own lane and what that means is like also like your 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 own mental lane right like your own mental lane of like like blinders like i don't know i don't know what matt's doing right now i don't i don't even know matt's story i don't know anything about gratani like Mm -hmm. cool he i I want to take him i don't even know you know just focus on you stay present because you mentioned perfectly if you think too much about the past so much so that you're bringing into the present well then you really are never present right you're always in the past so you're going to completely be in that cycle of just just destroying your account so i appreciate you saying that man is there anything you want to wrap it up with or anything you want to say yeah i think i mean so really you have to define what your strategy is and then you also have to have like a picture of well, what is consistency to you? Mm. Because consistency is different for every single person. And what is success? Like a lot of times people tell me all the time, like, hey, I want to be a successful trader. I'm like, to me, being a successful trader is one, not blowing up my account. Two, being consistently profitable every single year. Three, like not being a jackass on social media like that. (laughs) Those are like the three things I try to do every year. Uh, So you have to define what that is. Uh, And this kind of segues slightly to people say, well, what's the best strategy or what's this or what's that? And it's like, 
well, you have to define that. I can show you what a strategy is and what I mean by a strategy, but you may not like it. You may want to do something different. So you have to kind of build your own goals of in your mind, what is consistent, what is profitable. And that is kind of like staying in your own lane and not worrying about me or Alex or ducks or anyone that you admire don't admire anyone okay they're they're all losing traders just think of them as losing traders they lose okay you're gonna lose and you're gonna win but there's really no one is really kind of better in this game than anyone else because we all go through fluctuations yep. i'm getting smacked around and then ducks is like yo i made five hundred thousand dollars i'm like fuck you <laughs> like in my mind but the thing is is like that happens. Do you know what yep. I'm saying? Yes, I do know. It's fun. and you know, it's it's funny. It's what's what's really great is you ask the question. I want everyone to ask yourself the question. That specific question is what is success for you? Because you also got to take account of where you are right now, right? Like success for you this year might be not losing money. You know, like it could be breaking even. Maybe, maybe you had a horrible year last year. Maybe this year it's break even. Maybe it's, you know, have a setup that you can rely on. Like whatever it is, like that could be success because I think you can agree, like a lot of people have a monetary goal as success, mm -hmm. but I think that always is going to get pushed. You know, like you hit, you know, you, you hit, you get, you, you <laughs> yeah, you, you hit a hundred K. I want to make a million. You hit a million. I want to make 2 million. You hit yeah. two. I want to hit 10, you know, like, you hit 15 million, you want 20, you hit yeah. 20 million, you want 25. Like, yeah, of course. And so like, that's, that's, I guess the, if you are a successful trader and you're listening to this, the other question that you have to deal with is how much is enough? Mm. Because at some level money loses its utility in the sense for you. And I think people have done like science experiments on this, like how much money is enough for one individual to be comfortable. And then people will be like, well, I watched the movie Wall Street and therefore the more money I have, I am more amazing. And it's like, yeah, <laughs> there was other <laughs> lessons in that movie that yeah. you completely ignored. <laughs> But that's fine. You know, someone literally, you know, dies. Uh, in the second one, he jumps in front of a train and kills himself, one of the dudes. So you got to ask the question, how much is enough? And that, I'm not saying stop trading or stop making money. But what I am saying is, is like, if you are attaching your, like, value to the money that you make, that's also the problem that you're having of why you're losing. And then the other part is, is like when you're winning, that's a problem for you like mentally because now you're on the roller coaster of nothing will ever be enough and you're trying to fill a void that you can never fill. And so, you know. If you, you, want, if you want more coaching <laughs> sessions like this, call 1-800-MATTY-OWENS. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Well, look, yeah, you just I, gotta be careful, man. Yeah, like, no, you you spoke really deep there, and I appreciate it because I, I don't even want to end this, but it, it's it was I love it, and I think everyone, you gotta rewind this and listen to it again because there's some great value here. Hopefully, stuck to the end. And by the way, Matt, I don't know, do you even wear hats? Do you wear hats at all? No, you don't. So you like, you know what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna send you a be the trader T-shirt. That's what I'm gonna do. That'd be that'd be awesome. I'm gonna send you one, and and uh, like so that way you can have one, yeah, or or a hoodie, or a hoodie. I, I mean, love hoodies. All right, I'll do a hoodie. Love I'll hoodies. send you a hoodie. Hell yeah! I have so many hoodies, and it's like 90 degrees outside. I still wear a hoodie. <laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, look, man. I, um, where can people find you if they just have questions and they want to reach out to you? What, what's the best way for them to hook up with you? Yeah, so you can go to triforcetrader.com. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, Twitch, literally almost any social media platform at Triforce Trader. And I also have a free Discord where you can come in and go through tons of content and interact with other people and sometimes me. But yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you so much again, my man. You have a great day. You too.